Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas. And we're up here live from the balcony of New Life Fellowship. Where are you guys at? Make some noise. Hey, uh, welcome to New Life. I'm Pastor Gomez. And we like to, we're glad you're here. Uh, some of you, some of you have been here quite a while. Others just arrived. Let me tell you a story that changed my wife and I. 25 years ago, my wife and I came to Galveston, and we only had one child. As a matter of fact, when we moved to Galveston from San Antonio, it was my child's birthday. He was turning three years old. So the first three, four years in Galveston, we only had one child. And back then, most of the people in church wanted my wife and I to have another baby. So between my oldest son and my middle daughter, child, they're in about six and a half, almost seven years. So a couple of years later, after we've been here about four or five years, I announced to the congregation, I told them the story, that my wife was pregnant, and we were expecting our second child. When I told them that story, my God, they erupted, they applauded, they were excited because we finally we were having a second child. Well, long story short, about a year and a half after my daughter was born, I think my wife was sick that Sunday, and she didn't come to church, and we were expecting our third child. 
So when I told them that we were expecting our, our daughter, they got excited. They applauded because they believed my story. Now, if you've been here, you know I like to joke around, right? That Sunday, when I told the church the true story that we were expecting our third child, they just looked at me with unbelief. They did not applaud because Kayla was going to be born. <laughs> they actually did not believe my story. It was into the afternoon that they came and my wife came. They really went to her and said, are you really expecting your third child? And my wife said, yes, we are expecting our third child. So even though they didn't believe my story, our third child is sitting right there. And as parents, every time one of our kids was born, it brought a blessing to our life. And it changed us as individuals, as parents, is how we see life. Well, today I want to tell you about another birth, not about my kids. I want to tell you about the birth of God's son. And I want to tell you that the, the story of Jesus being born, it's a true story. And this story is not only true, it's the only story that changes lives and changes the course of history. So if you're here... You've heard the story of Christmas. You believe it. But your, your life and your history has never been changed. If you receive the gift of God that was God's son, Jesus, he will not only change your life, he will change the story of your life. So allow me to read the story. In Luke, you saw it narrated, and you saw the kids. Weren't they wonderful as A.J. was narrating the angels and the... All right, I can see you're not applauding because they were not your kids. <laughs> the Christmas story is not only a true story, it's the only story that changes life. So let me begin by telling you that this story is true. Say with me, it's true. It's true. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, Luke is writing and he's going to give an account of this story. And he writes and says this. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. He said, you know, many have written, have said what I'm about to tell you, what I'm about to write. Verse 2 says, just as they were handed down to us by those from the, fir from the first were eyewitness and the servants of the Lord. So Luke is saying, they were actually eyewitnesses that have shared this story. Not only the eyewitnesses, but those that are servants of the word or ministers or apostles or disciples. And then he says in verse 3, with this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, my Excellent Theophilus. So Luke says, all right, this account, many have, there were eyewitnesses, there has been servants of the Lord. But I took it upon myself to make a careful investigation. Now, for those of you that don't know, Luke was a doctor. See, well, he was very meticulous. So not only did he take the time to hear what the eyewitness had said and had heard what the ministers of the gospel had said, he took it upon himself as a doctor, as an investigator, to diligently, carefully investigate everything from the beginning. And he said, so therefore, I decided to write an order account for you, my excellent Theophilus. The gospel of Luke was written by Luke, and he writes it, or he sends this letter to this man named Theophilus. And then in verse 4, he says this, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. So in other words, what Luke is trying to say is this. After carefully hearing what eyewitness had said, he discovered that the story is true. After hearing where the minister of the gospel had said, he discovered that the story is true. After making his own careful investigation, Luke discovered that the story is true. And he says, therefore, I want to remind you that everything that you have been taught about this story is 
true. So not only is he affirming to Theophilus that the story that he had believed and he had heard was true. I'm here today, not as Luke, but I'm here today as your pastor to tell you that everything that is in the Bible according to God's word about the story of Jesus, it is a true story. Amen. Say it with me, it's true. it's true. Well, not only is this story true, but this is the only story that changes people's life. And you'll see that this story changed Mary's life. Those of you that are familiar, Mary was a virgin. She was engaged. She was about to get married with Joseph. Now, I want you to take you into the account that Luke writes about, and I want you to see how this story changed Mary's life and changed her history. Luke goes on to say in verse 26, he says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledge to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And then in verse 31, Luke says, Mary, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. In verse 34, Mary is, is, is amazed, is perplexed, and she says this, How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called Son of God. And then the angel says this, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Let me read that again. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Mary Right now, you might be wondering how this is going to happen. Well, I've already told you the Spirit of God is going to come upon you. And the son that you're going to be born is going to be called the son of the most high God. And Mary says, how can this be? I am a virgin. Yes, I'm about to get married with Joseph. But how is this going to happen? And the angel said, for God, there is nothing impossible. And then I, I, I like what this says. Verse 30, it says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answers to the angel, replies to the angel. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. Come on, read with me the following verse. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel of the Lord left her. Now, this is what it means. Mary, scholars believe, was anywhere between 13 and 16 years old. Joseph had come one day to her house and proposed meritimony and had asked, Mary's hand in marriage. And the tradition was that the, the, the groom would leave and prepare a home, would prepare a place. And while he was preparing this, not only a home to live, and he was making preparations for the wedding, she would be with her parents, and she would be ready for either a six months to a year to come and get married and then consume the marriage. So it was during this time that Mary and Joseph were engaged that the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary. And yes, Mary was amazed that suddenly an angel from heaven had come to where she was at and had, was giving her this message. And Mary, like any human being, could not understand what God was trying to relate, what God was trying to communicate to her, that this son that was going to be born was not only going to change her life, but Jesus, the Son of God, would be the Savior of the world, and he would come not only to change her life and her destiny and her history, but Jesus would come to change every human man born that he, he, because Jesus is the only one that can change history. Now, how did this happen that Mary's life was changed? Mary had a decision to make. Do I accept for my body to be used so that the Holy Spirit will come over me and through my body, through my womb, this child be born? Mary could immediately reject it, the message reject it, the responsibility rejected the privilege that she was chosen as a virgin. And if Mary would have said no, God would have simply chose somebody else. It could have been a Martha. It could, have been, uh, it could have been someone else. It so happened that God chose Mary. Now, what changed Mary's life was that she accepted what the angel was telling her. And, he's, and Mary says, 
May the word of the Lord, may your word be fulfilled. See, most of us know the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord's Prayer starts by, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You and I do not live in heaven. You and I live on earth. And it is when God's will and God's word is fulfilled in your life, and when you accept God's word in your life and God's will, that your life and destiny is changed. You are not changed. You have not changed. Through obviously, our physicality, we, we've grown, we've changed. But your innermost being, no one can change that. Only God changes it because the story of Christmas is true. And the way God changed Mary's life, God will also change your life and your history. Amen. So the life of Mary was changed by this story. So let me give you the other account and show you that this story not only changed Mary, it also changed Joseph's life. So what I'm trying to tell you, whether you're male or female, God can and God will change your life. Amen. So Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew gives the account of what is transpiring and what is happening. As all of this is happening, the Bible says this in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. Notice what he's saying. Mary was pledged, and this is how it happened, before they came together. She was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind, notice what it says here, he had in mind to divorce, divorce her quietly. Now, 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 I want you to see this. All of you, most of us, are governed by our thoughts. Now, your thoughts are not bad. I believe all of you have good thoughts. But God's thoughts are better than yours, and God's thoughts are better than mine. See, most of us, this is what happens in our life. Our thoughts control us, and what we think, we begin to feel. And what we feel, we begin to talk. And what I think and what I feel when I talk directs my life. It's, for example, anyone that has taken their life, that's committed suicide, it, 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 it begins with a thought. I hate myself. I'm going to kill myself. So they start feeling, not only did they start thinking suicidal thoughts, they begin to feel suicidal. Either quietly or publicly, they begin to say that somehow, some way, they were going to take their life. Why did they take their life? Because they begin to think about it, they begin to feel it, and then they begin to act on it. In other words, before you make a decision in your life, every decision in your life, wrong or bad, started with a thought and it's begun to govern your feelings. So this is what happened with Joseph. Joseph, hearing that Mary was pregnant, began to think, oh my God, this baby is not mine. Uh-uh. <laughs> Y'all can blame it on someone else, but he's not mine. See, Joseph did not understand that this baby was not birthed because Mary had had contact with another man. This baby that was going to be birthed was, bor was going to be born because the Holy Spirit had come over Mary. So the Bible says, Joseph, thinking on this, the Bible says, he, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said. Notice what the angel says to Joseph in the dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what she is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So... Joseph is asleep, and in dreams, the angel says, Joseph, don't be afraid to accept God's will, God's plans, not only for Mary. Don't be afraid to accept God's will and God's plan, because what God is doing is through the Holy Spirit. And then verse 21 says this, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And then verse 24 says this, 
when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home and his wife. So here is, like any other day, Joseph had, goes to sleep. And when he goes to sleep, he's thinking these thoughts. The woman, the girl that I propose to is having a baby, and that baby is not mine. What do you do when you're going through a problem and you didn't cause that problem? Let me, let me talk to you. Many of us try to do either quietly or, or in public what Joseph did. See, everything in your life, everything in your life will come against you. And if you don't know God, you will try to run away from everything in your life. Some of you are at, are at a juncture in your life and what has happened for the past 5, 10, 15 years, you've given up on everything. Can I tell you that it is not God's will for you to abandon your wife, for you to abandon your children? Rather quietly or in public. It's not God's will for you. Some of you are here and you abandoned your faith many years ago and it was not God's will. And I came... You can attest that nothing has worked out for you. Because it's not a woman, it's not a man, it's not a job, it's not a car. It's the story of Christmas, it's the story of God, it's the story of Jesus. The only thing that changes your life. So Joseph is trying to abandon. He's about to abort God's plans for his life. Joseph would have never appeared in the Bible in the course of history as Jesus' earthly father, if he goes on to what he was thinking of doing, abandoning what God was about to do. So like Mary, Joseph had a decision to make. And when he woke up and realized that this dream was from God, the Bible says that Joseph woke up and did exactly as the angel commanded him to do. And the Bible says that he received Mary as his wife. A couple of months later, baby Jesus is born. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. In your life will never change as long as you continue to do your thoughts and your feelings and your will. Your life changes when you submit your life and your thoughts to the will of God and you obey what God commands you to do. Amen. Now, let me show you this. When Jesus was born, when Jesus was born, if you give me the next slide, please, I want you to see this. When, when I was in school, I loved history, and I still, I, I, I still love history. But history tells us one thing, that when Jesus was born, he divided the course of history. Everything that was written before Jesus was born is called be, before Christ. A.D., Anno Domini means after Christ or after the birth of Christ. What I want you to see is this. When Joseph, when Mary, the angel came and Jesus was born, the life and the history of Mary was one before Christ and her life was different after Christ. When Joseph, Jesus came into his life and Jesus was born, Joseph was one before Christ, and Joseph was a different person after Christ. Those of you that God has changed our life, when they talk about your life, they talk about you, what you were before Christ, and you are a new creation. You are different now after Christ. The Bible says, that if a person is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. In other words, 
You can never change your life and you can never change your history. But when Jesus is born in your life, he changes your life and he changes your history. So when they talk about David Gomez, they talk about my life from the age of 1 to the age of 16. I was one person, but when I accepted Christ at 16, now I'm 49. At 16, my life changed and now I am a different person. Whatever your name is, when Jesus was born into your life and the story became a reality, your life your history, your destiny was changed because Jesus is true and not only does he change his life, he will change the course of your history. So let me ask you before you continue to applaud, is there anyone here that you're a different person since Jesus was born in your life? When you talk about you, when they talk about you, yes, he was this, he was that. I was, but I'm no longer that. I am a new creation. So are you ready to receive Jesus in your life? Because if you receive Jesus today, he will change your heart, he will change your life, and he will, like Mary and Joseph, change the history of your life. So if you are, please stand. Everybody stand. Allow me to pray for you. If you're here and you have never received Christ in your life, allow me to pray for you. If you are here and you abandon your faith, can I tell you, welcome home. God has been waiting for you. It's not a coincidence. Maybe someone invited you to come see the children, but it's not a coincidence. God is after you because he loves you and he wants to welcome you home. Don't continue to do your will. Don't continue to live how you think and how you feel. Accept, like Mary, God's word. And like Joseph, do what the angel said. And God will change your life and your history. If you are ready for God to change your life and your history, there where you're at. I'm not going to ask you to get out of your seat. But allow me to pray for you. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Young, God bless you. Over there, God bless you. Anybody else? Those of you that raise your hand. Anybody else says, you know what? I need God to change my life. Or you abandon your faith and you say, you know what? It's been a long time I hadn't come back to church. It's not about coming back to church. It's about coming back to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So allow me to pray for you. If you raise your hand, you're going to say this prayer after me. Then, at the end of the service, go to our guest center and someone will give you a Bible. Just our way of saying thank you for coming and congratulations for receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, the rest of you that already received Christ in your life, let me tell you the following thing. Yesterday I received a letter, of course. I received a letter and I was reading and my wife and I were about to go to sleep and I said, give me, give me 10 minutes, let me read this. And it so happened that I was reading the first chapter of a book that either just came out or is about to come out. And the story it was, is, is about a lady. She was an accountant. She met this guy and they started going to a church. She was heavenly involved in a church. Five years later, she goes through a divorce. And when they go through a divorce, she abandons her faith and she abandons the church. Now, she finds herself as a single mom raising two or three children. And after about four or five years, she's trying to go back to church. But every church she visits, she finds that there are problems. Can I tell you, even if you go to the smallest or to the biggest church, every church has problems. The problem is not the church. The problem is us. <laughs> well, finally she decides to stay at one church. And she makes an appointment for the pastors to come visit her. And the pastors go to visit her. And as they're talking, she brings out a list of everything that is wrong with every church she's visited. Now, she's been away from her faith for four or five years. She's gone through a hor horrible divorce. But now she's trying to come back to church. But she's, she's only searching 
for people to serve her purpose. She finally brings out a list and tells the pastor's wife, you know, I visited your church several times. And to tell you the truth, I found this that is wrong and I failed. And she thought the pastor's wife was going to be offended. The pastor's wife looked at her sternly with a smiling look. And she says, can I tell you where your problem consists? She says, yes. See, your problem is that you're looking for people to serve you. In other words, you're inwardly focused. Christianity is not being about inwardly focused. Christianity is being outward focused. Now, the story says this, that she was frustrated. She was depressed. What happens with a kid when you, he's eating so much ice cream, he gets fed up. He begins to vomit. See, when you live a selfish Christian life, you're never satisfied. And when you focus on God and you, dis, you begin to serve others, you begin to find your gifting and you begin to find your purpose. Christianity is not about you. It's not about me. It's about God. And it's about telling others that this story is true. So I challenge you. At the end, as we come to the conclusion of the year and we start about it next year, don't just be a Christian that shows up on Sunday. Focus on others and God will see you will be part of history where you see people's, people's life change. So pray with me. Pray with me. Pray with me. Those of you that raise your hand, everybody saying this prayer, share, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the story of Christmas. Thank you because the story is true. Not only did it change Mary's life, come on, say it out loud. Not only did it change Mary's life, and it changed Joseph's life, but I want you to change my life. Jesus, as you were conceived in Mary's womb, please be birthed in my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. God, forgive me of my sins. Change my life and change my history. And help me from this day forward to live for you. God, break any addiction and every resentment in my heart and allow me to see everything that you have for me. Like Mary, I pray, let your word be fulfilled in my life. And like Joseph, I pray, allow me to obey everything that you want me to do. Not to live according to how I think and how I feel, but to live according to your will. I pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. If you say that prayer, allow us to be the first one to congratulate you. And please go to our guest center at the end of the service. You may be seated. Enjoy the rest of the service because this story is true.